and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headline. Journalist Maria Ressa convicted of libel in a big blow to press freedom in the Philippines. Colombians march in Bogota against government mismanagement of pandemic. Hamas calls for Palestinian unity to resist Israel's annexation plan. Irish establishment parties join hands to keep Sinn Féin out. U.S. APEX Court rules for protection for LGBTQ workers against job discrimination. We begin with the Philippines, where journalist Maria Ressa was found guilty of cyber libel by a court on Monday. She is one of the co-founders and the CEO of Rappler. She was declared guilty of libel along with the Rappler journalist Rinaldo Santos Jr. for publishing a story about a multimillionaire businessman Wilfredo King in 2012. They were convicted under a highly contentious cybercrimes law from 2012 and on a matter of technicality. The libel case was filed by King in October 2017. The article alleged that King had possible connections with Manila's drug cartels and had apparently bribed a Supreme Court Chief Justice with a sports car. While King alleged that the rival businesses were behind the piece, Ressa and Rappler have asserted that their editorial policies are rigorously independent. Ressa and Santos have been jointly fined 400,000 Philippines peso, close to 8,000 US dollars, and they are to serve a jail sentence of minimum six months and a maximum of six years. Ressa and Santos have valid bails and are preparing to appeal against the sentencing to higher courts. Many, including Ressa herself, have decried the judgment as a blow to press freedom and independence of journalists. Ressa currently faces seven other criminal cases, all of which were filed after Rodrigo Duterte came to power. Rappler, Rappler and Ressa have reported extensively on Duterte's war on drugs and counter-insurgency programs in the southern Philippines and the massive toll that has taken on the human rights in the country. We now go to Colombia where massive mobilizations took place on Monday. Protests took place in different parts of Colombia's capital, Bogota. People marched to protest the national and local government's mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic. A large mobilization was also held in Medellin, denouncing government negligence. During the counter-pandemic lockdown in Colombia, thousands of families have been suffering from hunger and the lack of necessary facilities. Civil society movements have alleged that the national and local administrations have been exceedingly harsh in cracking down on communities. In Bogota, the administration of Mayor Claudia Lopez has been involved in forced eviction of dozens of families in poorer neighborhoods without any rehabilitation. The city administration also repressed a mobilization organized by victims of the armed conflict demanding dignified living conditions to survive the lockdown. Other issues raised by protesters included the continued assassinations of social leaders, human rights activists and FARC ex-combatants and their family members. Since the lockdown, over 45 people have been assassinated. The National Police or the ESMA came down heavily on protesters in both Bogota and Medellin. In Palestine, the Hamas movement has called for a broader unity among Palestinians to confront Israel's annexation plans. Addressing the media on Monday, Salah al fartawil senior Hamas official and member of its political bureau, emphasized that a united struggle will bring the Palestinian project back on track. The government of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is set to start the process of annexing large parts of Jordan Valley in the occupied West Bank from July 1st. According to the plan, at least 30% of pre-1967 Palestine will be annexed into Israel. Despite international condemnation of the plan, Israel, which has the support of the US, is going ahead with the annexation. Earlier on June 9, Ismail Haniyeh, the head of Hamas Political Bureau, had asked all the Arab countries to come together and confront the Israeli annexation plan. Salah al bardawil insisted that Palestinian unity is key to successfully resisting the annexation and that it is the duty of all Palestinians to rise up against it. In the meanwhile, Israeli warplanes and artillery reportedly bombed the Gaza Strip last night. For our next story, we go to Ireland where a new coalition government is coming up after months of deadlock. The two centrist establishment parties, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, are set to form the government along with the Green Party. The agreement, arrived at on Monday by the three rival parties, will need to be ratified by the party legislators. The coalition will have a rotating prime minister with no details about whether the Fine Gael prime minister would continue. 
the proposal of the coalition will need to be passed by all the parties in 10 days. The general elections held in Ireland earlier this year in February threw up a hung parliament as the Sinn Féin won the plura plurality of popular votes, winning 37 out of the 42 seats it contested. The unprecedented centrist alliance along with the Greens has been decried by the Sinn Féin and other progressive movements in Ireland for going against the popular mandate. The pro-unity Sinn Féin has made significant advances in popular support, not only in Ireland but also the UK-controlled region of Northern Ireland, threatening the establishment parties in both countries. Finally, in a major victory for LGBTQ plus workers in the US, the United States Supreme Court ruled on Monday in favor of a federal workplace protection against homophobic and transphobic discrimination. The verdict was backed by six judges, while three were opposed to it. It said that it would be impossible to discriminate against someone for being transgender or gay without discriminating on the basis of sex. This expanded the anti-discrimination clauses under the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to LGBTQ plus workers. The landmark judgment is a result of decades of work put in by LGBTQ activists and the trade union movement. The judgment was part of concluding three cases of discrimination that had reached federal courts over the last decade. The plaintiffs of these cases were Amy Stephens, Donald Zarda and Gerard Bostock. Of the three, only Bostock remains alive to see the judgment today. Stephens worked as a funeral director in Michigan and was fired after she informed her boss that she was about to transition as a woman. Stephens died earlier this year. Zarda, a skydiving instructor at a recreational, uh, at a recreational company, was fired after he happened to mention that he was gay to one of the customers. Bostock was an award-winning social worker for child welfare in Clayton County, Georgia, before he was fired for joining a gay softball team. The court decision is expected to benefit over an estimated 8 million LGBTQ plus workers in the country who live in states with no anti-discrimination law or workplace protection for sexual minorities and transgenders. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesista.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar.